Welcome to this screencast about porting small program from Python 2 to Python 3. It was prepared as a follow-up to a talk about the differences between Python 2 and Python 3. I gave this talk during the April 2013 Linux days in Graz. Before porting anything, make sure that some prerequisites are met. First, you need to have a comprehensive battery of unit tests. Let's run my tests, those tests and I got 55 passes. The second thing you need to ensure before starting is that you have the old version stored in a version control system. I use Mercurial and uh, the current working directory is clean and the log says that the last check-in I did was adding a tag before porting to Python 3. So I can go back whenever I need to. Porting follows this flowchart. We st start by a working commit of the Python 2 version and then we run 2 to 3, run our unit tests. If they do not pass we need to fix the failures until everything passes. Then we need to make sure that the system by itself, so the program works for the user. If not we might have to add some unit tests if appropriate, fix everything that's wrong until the system is working and commit the final state. We can get started. The program I'm trying to port is VRPTWMS, which means Vehicle Routing Problem with Time Windows and Multiple Service Workers, which is a small solver. Before starting, I also try to run the program by itself. Let's do a basic configuration. I run a small instance so it doesn't take too long, and it works. Good. Let's run 223 with the option minus w which means change the files in place and dot means change all pure python files in the current directory and its subdirectories. We see the differences so those are the changes made by 223 and since I use Cython to speed up my code I need to recompile the Cython files. Make sure that your version of Cython works for Python 3 I have version 0 0.18 which is fine and then I need to recompile my code but I need to make sure that I run the setup script with Python 3 otherwise I'll run into trouble. And let's run those tests for Python 3 to see if everything works now. Ouch! 53 out of 55 tests are failing. Well hopefully it's just one or two or three mistakes to get all the tests back. Here we have a type error, expected byte array and got a string. This is probably the most common issue you can have when porting from Python 2 to Python 3. What does it occur? It occurs in problemreader.pyx and since the pyx file 2 to 3 did not adjust it. So go to line 45 where the issue happens. Let's read this. And since this is a C extension here I need to take this file name which is Unicode and encode it to UTF-8. We can recompile everything and see if the tests now pass. And now it's tests 3. Still 53 errors but something else is going wrong. Now its object has no attribute next. Let's look at the problem. Chat, the problem occurs in problemreader.pyx and it's occurring at line 75. Okay, so data seems to be an iterator and now we need to call next on the iterator instead of iterator.next. Okay regenerate the pyx files, run setup again to compile everything we need and let's see what nose test says. Oh nice, we're already probably done but keep in mind that you need to test the program, just run it. So let's do that. And something's wrong here. 
in line 127, this is a regular call to the print function, but this looks fine. This is perfect Python 3. Well, apparently, CLI wasn't run with Python 3. Let's have a short look. And no, it wasn't, because uh, Python 2 to 3 doesn't yet adjust the shebangs. And we can run this right away because it was a Python file and not a PYX file. And this works. Let's try it with different options. So here we have the option plot problem, which uses matplotlib for Python 3. And there's something wrong again. It can't convert bytes object to string. It's yet again a byte array versus Unicode issue. Let's look at the issue. It's here in line 70 of Painter. Hop. And I do know that config.imageDeer is a Unicode string. OS.sep is Unicode. This here is obviously a Python 3 Unicode as well. So this is probably a byte array. Let's decode it from UTF-8 and see if this works. Since I just changed the Python file, I can run it again. Oh, nice. At least now it's working. The last thing that remains is to check in the new state to our version control system. Let's look at the state. Here we've got some .bak files, backup files generated from 2 to 3. We can remove mm -hmm. these. And those are the files we adjusted and the files the 2 to 3 adjusted for us. Now we can check it in with the message ported the vrptwms solver to python3. I hope you can put the information from this screencast to good use and that you learned that it doesn't really have to be difficult to port existing Python 2 code to Python 3. But of course, for, for other libraries, this might be much, much harder. At the end, I'd like to point you to a good online example for porting a library to Python 3. It's part of Mark Pilgrim's book, Dive into Python 3. Dive into Python 3. That's the website. Here's the book. and. In chapter 15, we've got this case study of porting the charted library to Python 3, which is very recommendable. Thank you very much for your attention and have a good afternoon.